hello everyone, thank you for joining us for another video uh, interview. I'm Reza Rad and here I'm with... The, Hi, I'm Will Thompson. The mighty Will Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> everyone I think knows you from, from the Power BI videos back in the days. Anybody who has spent any time with Power BI may well have come across me somewhere along yeah. the way. Yeah, or if, if they didn't see you, they know your voice because... Uh, it's yeah, 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 also possible, yeah. <laughs> that, that's right, yeah. So, so from Power BI now to the data activator. Yeah, that's right. Reflex, uh, called Reflex data, and activator data activator now. Data, yeah, right. we, we were we were known as Project Reflex before. That was kind of our code name before uh, before we launched. Uh, and then in October last year, when we got to public preview, uh, that's that's kind of where we came out and said, "Hey, this is data activator." Yeah, uh, and we kept the reflex thing. Yeah, uh, still the, the like item you that you create, create a that, that manages your triggers. Yeah, that's I like the reflex. name actually. Reflex. Yeah, it, it was you know the vision that we kind of set out for it was all about um, this kind of stimulus response system for a business, right? You've mm -hmm. got all of these signals coming in from IoT streams, from applications that are emitting events, even from slower moving data. You know, as, as data changes in a Power BI report or in a data warehouse, wherever it might be, you've got all of this this input. And there are particular conditions or patterns or things that you want to watch for in that data. And then there's an action that you're trying to drive a change in the business, either the business processes. It might be something as simple as alerting, but it could be actually saying, hey, I'm going to reach into a business system and make a change. And trying to drive the change between mm. those, those inputs and responses and reduce the, the, the latency of those is where we're seeing customers really kind of try and find some competitive advantage and trying to leverage that data a bit, bit, bit better. Um, and that felt like that kind of stimulus response thing in a, in a reflex. Mm, that's you know, right, you, yeah. you, you, your body almost doesn't think about it. Correct, um, yes. I mean, yeah, that's the point of a reflex, right? Is you don't yeah, think about it. Yeah, it becomes just part of the, the, the lifeblood of your body. It's the yeah, lifeblood of your organization. That's like your response system, things. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is cool. So, so this data activator, uh, basically, like um, one of the things I get from a lot of people when I'm doing a training in Fabric, uh, like one of the first questions is that, well, I can do that with uh, alert in the Power BI dashboard. Yeah, yeah. Right. Can you elaborate that a little bit? Like, what is yeah, the difference? I mean, it's such a really good point where we're seeing, or, or we have seen over the last however many years since we built that Power BI alerting capability in the dashboard. Um, People use that as just a way of saying, hey, I've got a value in the dashboard, I want to monitor that. Yeah. But it's really limited. You know, you can say, I'm going to type in a number, and when that mm. value goes over that number, or when that value changes, mm. alert me. And that's it. That, that's um, right, the yeah. problem is, if you've got lots of those things to monitor, mm. let's say you've got 12 different product lines, or 100 different product lines, or 1,000 different product lines, you've got to set up an alert for each one of those. Yeah. What Data Activator will do is say, okay, I, I'm going to monitor a set of things for you, business objects, mm. instances of those objects, really. And when any one of those things meets a particular condition, we're going to take the action, whether it's an alert or, or some other thing. That was one of the key things that, that we saw from, from those existing Power BI users mm. where um, there was a gap and, and we could see that Data Activator could fill that. The other one is that it's very kind of point in time. You have that dashboard, mm. tell me when that number changes, after it's changed, I don't really care anymore, or I don't really have a way of tracking that, mm. how that's changed over a period of time. And we see particularly, um, I, f I found this pretty much with every customer I talk to about this, like they'll say, oh yeah, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm monitoring like air, uh, airplanes coming into an airport and I need to know when the gate that it's gonna come in on changes. Mm -hmm. I wanna go send an alert to our customers who are waiting so they know which, which gates they need to be at. And then they'll say, oh actually, We've often seen that you know a gate will change once, and then after a couple of minutes it will change again because we've had a jiggle around a bunch of other aircraft. That's right, yeah. So actually, we want to wait 15 minutes, and only when, once the gates kind of settle down, then, that's when we want to send it. Right. Or I've got an IoT sensor that's going up mm. and down over time. If it goes over 50, send the alert. Well, actually, mm. no. It has to go over 50 and stay there for five minutes, mm. then send the alert. Or it has to happen five times over the course of All an of hour. All of these type of conditions. There's some slightly more complex logic, particularly over a period of time, mm. that you just can't do with the Power BI dashboard alerts. Yeah, and, that's right. and that's where you need something that's really built to, to look at changes in data over a period of time. And that, again, was kind of where we were coming from, saying, hey, we've got an engine that can, can do that, and we've got mm. an engine that, that, that can do that at scale across many, many, many of these business objects. That's where the activator can, can really sort of differentiate it, itself. Correct, as well. correct. And, and it is built in the same way as I would say 
um, like, like the Power BI is built, right? So you don't really need to uh, be a coding expert or an right. engineer to right. build it. It has yeah, a good, yeah. good UI. So was that as part of your design process? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, the, um, the, the target audience and the idea of building this is this kind of SaaS application that anybody can kind of come along to, pick your data from wherever it comes from. I can, th through a GUI, choose the data I care about, mm -hmm. apply some basic kind of data prep to it, maybe smooth, smooth out those averages or filter out particular values if they're erroneous, and then express those conditions without having to write any code. That was a key thing that we knew that we were going to have to do. Um, and, and partly because, yeah, those Power BI users are a key target audience for us. But just because we've seen with Fabric in general, right, we're trying to appeal and bring that analytic capability to a much broader set of people. And doing that with real-time data is really hard so far. Mm. You know, um, previously having to go and, and, and you know fire up Azure Streaming Analytics, like yeah. it's a really powerful tool, but you've got to be an Azure developer to do it. That's, and that's right. Tough. It's not a, like a citizen developer. It's not like a citizen developer yeah. task. Yeah, it's 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 not plug and play. It's not a quick thing that somebody can get started mm. with. Um, you know, I, I I don't claim to be an expert in it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I've played around with it a little bit when I've been doing like IoT things. Um, but yeah, it's like that, that, that's, a, that's a tool that, that takes time to go and learn. Mm. We're aiming data activator at something you can pick up in an afternoon, much like Power BI, right? That's you right. Know, it's meant yeah. to be something you could just kind of get started with, point at some CSV files. There's, there's always a little bit of a barrier to entry with any kind of streaming challenge right, where, yeah. but where just streaming data in general is a little harder to get access to. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something we're trying to, trying to address and trying to solve elsewhere in Fabric, where we want to allow... It, it, we want to make it easier for, for people to go and discover what streaming sources are there out there in my organization. You look at what um, OneLake and the OneLake Data Hub is, is enabling for organizations who are trying to publish and reuse and share Power BI data sets and the data in OneLake and all those other places. Doing that for streaming data is a key kind of vision for us. Like we, we see that as kind of like a key thing to make real-time streaming data accessible to a much wider audience. That's right. And, and you know, we're working on that. Nothing we can talk about right now, but yeah. it's coming. Yeah, that's right. And, and uh, like uh, the other like challenge, I, I would say, uh, or, or question in people's mind is that, well, we got this um, data activator now helping us like to define like if then type if then else mm -hmm. type of things mm -hmm. uh, inside Power BI or Fabric. But then on the other hand side in Power Platform, we have the Power Automate. Right, which yeah, yeah, yeah. is kind of doing similar, kind of similar. thing, but, yeah. but in a different yeah, 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 exactly. uh, yeah, different stage. What, it, it, what is, is your feeling? So, what should be differentiator for people when they choose which one? Yeah, I, I think, um, like I said earlier about the idea of tracking something over a period of time, mm. that's tough to do in Power Automate. That's right. Um, yeah. Power Automate's very kind of, um, I, I, it, they, they position it as, as a, a workflow automation kind of tool. And, and that's, that's a really right. good way of thinking yeah. about it. Like where... Um, an, an event happens or an event kind yeah. of trigger, trigger falls into the top. It's also funny because they talk about triggers as being the inputs. Yeah. Uh, we talk about triggers as being the outputs. So it's just terminology. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's something that will trigger a flow in Power Automate. Mm. And typically, everything you need to know to work out how to follow that path through that workflow is encapsulated in that event. That, that right. thing that triggered it has got all the information that you need to know to decide what path to go through that. Correct. Now, yeah, okay, sure, there are, you can go out and query out to other, run a SQL query as part of that workflow, yeah. or go call some other APIs through the Power Platform to, to, to then decide where you're going. But A, that then starts to involve some code and is kind of harder. Um, but then also, if you want to track that over a period of time, where you want to say, okay, I've got something that's coming in but I want to know how many times did something go through that path over the course of an hour. Mm. That's really tough to do. You know, you, you're, you're writing out to some temporary mm. SQL and then rereading from it. Um, I was talking to one of the other MVPs last week about she built some of these solutions where you were wiring these things together, but they become quite fragile yeah. and they're, they're, they're hard to manage and hard to maintain. And particularly, it's like the person who set that thing up, you've got to be a Power Automate wizard to, to be able to do that. That's right. Um, yeah. It's not the sort of thing that you can go and deliver to the, the, the business analyst or data analyst who, who owns that business process mm. and kind of let them out, have at it. Um, they may get there over a period of time and they'll have to learn a bit of Power Automate along the way. Mm. But one of the key things that we, we're making easy with Data Activator is, yeah, you, you can express these rules where it's like, I want to look for this behavior, this pattern over a period of time. 
that's that's way easier for us to express through through our tools. The other one is is the the ability to kind of bring reference data and multiple streams together. Um, although we don't have all the connectors in there at the moment that we'd like and things right, that we're but... working on, um, the idea of saying, well, I've got this, you know, I've got this business object that I care about. I'm managing, mm-hmm. you know, a package in a logistics system, or I've got a truck that I'm monitoring out on the road, or I've got, you know, even something less physical like a, a customer account. And I've got lots of streams of data that help me represent and model that 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 um, object. Maybe I've got my, um, you know, I've got my customer engagements, the the, the emails that I send, or I've got the, um, uh, uh, the, the the feed from my CRM system. But then I've also got a slower moving like data warehouse feed, um, or maybe I've got my IoT data that's coming in about my trucks or the, the 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 fridges and freezers that I'm managing in my stores. But then I've got some slower moving data that tells me who's the manager of that store. Right. And how are those things related? And, you know, Data Activator lets you model those, define the kind of the attributes that you care about for those objects, and then put those triggers on top that might map across them. And that modeling and that kind of, it, it's, it's kind of like making a, a semantic model like you might do at Power BI, mm. but it's a real-time one working over streams of data rather than tables of data. Correct. So, so we're, we're trying to provide a bit of that semantic modeling layer as well. And like that does not exist in Power Automate. There's, there's none of that kind of modeling capability. Um, and I think that's, that's again where the track data has, uh, it has a differentiation. That's right. Yeah. You know, if, if you are doing something where you're doing workflows and you need to take advantage of all those connectors, great. Power Platform is fantastic for that. And actually, we're trying to leverage that as well. Um, you know, we were talking about before the the one of the actions. One of the actions that you can take. Yeah, exactly. So, so data activator. When you define these triggers mm. to say, "Hey, I'm looking for a particular pattern in this data. Tell me when it goes over a certain threshold over a period of time." The action that you might take could be something simple like sending a text, uh, sending a, a Teams message, yeah. sending an email. But you can kick off a power auto, a power automate workflow. Right. So you could have. Um, you know, a connector to, to Jira or to Salesforce mm, or right. do something else in the Power Platform, maybe with one of those workflows, maybe with one of those approval workflows. Mm, and um, then trigger it from you. And you trigger it from Data Activator. And you can pass in information like, well, which of the things was it that, that, that triggered, that met this condition? That's right. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the timestamp of when it happened and you know, any other attributes about it that, that, that might be relevant at the time. So we do this, 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 we have this demo that, that I've used at a few events where we, we're looking at like tracking those rental bikes in different mm. cities. And, you know, a particular condition is met on the, from the, the, the telemetry, the sensors on those bikes that says, hey, it might need some maintenance. Well, let's use Power Automate to reach into the maintenance system and log a maintenance ticket, and we can feed in the information about where the bike's located, um, what the values of those sensors were, you know, what's the battery level of the bike, what, you know, um, GPS coordinates, whatever it might be. That can go into that, that uh, workflow, and sure, Power Automate might make some decisions based on that, um, or, or it might just like tag that stuff into the maintenance ticket or whatever gets created. Right. So these two can be more like, let's say, I mean, there are like, places that probably they can do the same thing, mm-hmm. uh, yep. but at some point they can be also complement of each other. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think when we think like further down the line as well, the complement, the, there's, there's the complementary stuff that you, you'll see today. Further down the line as well, we, we, we want to make, um, we, we actually want to start using Data Activator in some ways to, to kind of orchestrate some capabilities around Fabric. So m- maybe one particular, one of the really common things that we hear from customers is, can I use Data Activator to monitor data quality? Mm. Like I've got some data that I'm loading into my data lake. Um, uh, when that table gets finished writing into one lake, I want to run some data quality rules mm. over it and monitor the output of that. I'm like, great. Yep. In fact, we, I, heard her, I heard a her customer in the UK um, they, they're already doing this for Data Activator. Yeah. We, we, hadn't, we hadn't spoken to them about it. They found it, they tried and, it out, and, they, and they're already they using it. it. I'm like, hey, this is a preview. You know, don't, don't, <laughs> we're still a preview. Uh, it's great to hear that you're so excited about it. And that what they're doing is they're, they're, they're tracking exactly when their pipelines finish. Um, uh, they have a Power BI report that tracks the, um, uh, does these kind of data quality scores, tracks how many rows were loaded, what percentage of null, that kind of stuff. And they're using Data Activator to monitor those reports. And if the percentage of null that gets loaded is over a certain amount, or the number of rows is too low, or varies too much from yesterday, then they fire an alert. And like, That's really cool. That's exactly kind of how we, we want people to use Data Activator. Wouldn't it be even cooler as if there was a problem that was detected? 
it can kick off a workflow or kick off a pipeline that's that right. reloads the data, you know, that actually starts to self-heal the system. Like, that's a really cool, that starts to really start thinking about like, some exciting things that we might be able to do in the future. Um, that is right, yeah. I can talk about it right now. But yeah, no, that, 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 that is cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so the other thing, uh, like very similar scenario to that, is actually what we've been talking with one of the MVPs in the in the uh, like after the sessions, uh, like uh, because I like when I run the fabric, I want to see how my capacity is loaded, how it is working. So I got this capacity monitoring. Yeah, now I can connect it with it. Let's say if I can connect it with the data activator, it gives me some alerts that were like you are using a lot go and do something about yeah. it yeah. so so there are some really good potentials yeah definitely and, and, and i think I've, I've seen people doing this already today where the capacity usage metrics report i don't think i'm giving out the yeah. right name but you know the ones i mean um think back to what i was saying about data activator really excels at monitoring a whole suite of things of, of, of instances of these business objects this is the terminology we use think about all the capacities that might be running in your organization all the workspaces loaded on a capacity in an organization um, you can create one rule, one reflex that is monitoring all of those and saying when any one of those workspaces is using 80% of the capacity or even to the detail like of, of when any one of the operations going on in those workspaces hits a particular threshold, send me an alert because that tells me that one person is using up all our resources. Again, it would be great if at some point in the future we can say actually don't just alert me but stop it. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, as an admin, that, that would be so much so, so useful. And, and we'd love to do that. Um, again, you know, we're, we're, we're thinking about what sort of capabilities we can, we can build in the future for those. But for now, you know, because it'll work on top of any Power BI report, you can start building that's those alerting right, yeah. capabilities even, even today with some of those admin reports as well. Yeah, that's cool. You, you need a workspace to put the reflex item in. Um, you know, that, that needs to sit on a fabric capacity and you need to have right ac access to go and create that thing. But it can monitor a Power BI report from anywhere. Effectively, all we're doing is taking out the repetitive work of you opening the report looking at the thing and keeping a record of it that's and right we'll yeah. check how that changes over time tell you if it goes up and down by a certain amount or if it hits those particular thresholds um yeah you know we'll we'll, we'll, we'll track that stuff and just save you having to go and do that every day yeah that's 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 cool uh, so so in terms of like let's say the data activator um not necessarily roadmap, but uh, but things that might come to this in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, would this be possible? And you don't need to say dates, but is it something that you are thinking about it in like later to add that? Um, like you would have more actions added into these three actions or for example instead of creating this uh, only from power bi for example i could have yeah. like a mirrored snowflake database mm -hmm. that i can for example monitor one of those values over there things like that are these type of yeah. things in your pipeline yeah when I, when I think about kind of what we're doing the the, the vision for, for data activator i kind of see across kind of four pillars i guess one is is about data sources so being able to monitor from new things, you know, um, Power BI and an event stream of uh, where we can ingest data from today, we'd like to take that further and say, hey, can I just run an arbitrary SQL query or a KQL query? Mm -hmm. um, you know, are there other places like that I can ingest data from either as a stream or kind of on a schedule running that kind of query? Yeah. Um, then there's like what what kind of detection capability and those kind of semantic modeling capabilities I might have. Mm. Um, so, you know, today we can do uh, triggers that, that vary over time, or mm -hmm. uh, we just added recently um, when there's there's no signal coming from something. So you know, a, a device is emitting something, changing over time, and suddenly the signal disappears. Just that's hear the right. microphone. Sorry about no, that. that. That's not <laughs> <fine>. <laughs> when suddenly the signal disappears. That's the thing I want to be alerted on as well. And there's there's a load more of those kind of capabilities that that we hear. It's a very long tail of things. It's like adding DAX functions. It's like mm. you, you could spend your lifetime just adding DAX that's, functions. That's right. Yes. Like. Yeah. So there's a load of those. And then the third one, as you mentioned, is kind of actions. Like what what else could we do to help people close the loop in that business mm. business process? Um, you know, alerting is one, and it's why I mentioned earlier about how we're kind of leaning into Power Automate. But there's other things that we could do, you know, um, like I'm kind of hint to running a notebook, running or... notebooks, running pipelines. There's mm. loads of things like that. And, and it's also one of those areas where um, we really value feedback as well. That's um, right. You know, as customers are, are, are trying it out and saying, hey, this is how I would use it in this business process. What I really need is, you know, I, I, I want to control the frequency that I get those emails. 
you know, don't send me an alert every time. Just send me a daily digest. Right, yeah. Or, or a digest of all of these triggers. You know, I've got all of these conditions I'm looking for. Just send me an email once a day with a, with a, mm. uh, a, a summary of them all. Um, maybe it's, hey, I need to kind of log a, uh, log a ticket, not just through Power Automate, but I want to have some kind of acknowledgement of, did the person receive that alert? Are they going to actually do about it? They acknowledge that they're going to do something about it. Um, we, we, we do hear about those kind of scenarios as well. And we're debating, like, how far do we want to lean into that? ticketing kind of world. That's right. Yeah. Um, and then the fourth one is, is really like, what else can we do to help around fabric? And as an admin, are there these kind of orchestration scenarios where, yeah, I want to kick off pipelines or workflows or, mm, or I want to listen to data yeah. coming from different, um, different systems around fabric? Like, I want to know where my Power BI data set has finished loading. Uh, the data set refresh has finished. That's right. Yeah. How many rows did it load? How long did it take? Um, or I remember when we very first, one of the very first meetings we, we, we did with, um, with some customers about, data, about Project Reflex, as it was then, before mm. we'd announced it. And somebody said, you know, I'd, I'd love to know about um, what my users' experiences are opening Power BI reports. Like, there's a couple of reports that are really important to us. The CEO mm. looks at it every day. Mm. I need to know if it takes more than three seconds to open that report. Mm. I'd love to look at the performance metrics of those reports over time. And, and, you know, great, that, that's an ideal case. We'll monitor it, and if it starts creeping up or if it suddenly spikes up, we, we can send we'll alerts or we can alert, you know, yeah. do whatever remedial processes there might be for that. And, you know, f f for us as a product team, it's like, it's a great signal that we might want to listen to, but I'm not going to go build connectors for all those. I need help from those other product teams to, to emit that data and to raise that data up for us to go and that's right, uh, listen yeah. to. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's also feedback that you can give to those other product teams. So, like, let, yeah. <laughs> let them know as well as us know. Uh, it helps give us that kind that's of right. pressure on those guys too. What, what is the best channel of feedback for your the, team? The ideas, is the ideas for them. Right. Yeah, the ideas for them is, is a really, really um, good resource. I mean, again, if you know me from the Power BI world, I used to harp on, harp on about this all the time. The Power BI forum got so big, it was really hard to get new ideas noticed. Mm. As a new product team, that is not the case for us. We've got right. like eight in there at the moment. So, a, right. a new one? or new votes in there, we notice it. In fact, I've got a reflex alert. I've got a, I've got a data <laughs> activator <laughs> alert that's monitoring it every day. And whenever there's cool. a new item, it tells me. Um, so there's, there's that. And actually, the, the in-product fabric feedback, the NPS prompts, I don't know if you've ever right. seen these. Yeah. It says, like, rate us from 1 to 10, and you can mm. put in verbatims as well. Um, I get alerts about that as well. Um, <laughs> so those, those two forums are, are, are really good. The community forums in general, actually, um, uh, community.fabric.microsoft.com, mm. whatever yeah. it is, um, we, we monitor those pretty regularly. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a good active discussion in there about like, how do I do this? Can I use the track to for that? Um, and that's a good place to kind of ask those questions and give that feedback as well. That, that's right, yeah. Uh, one, one last thing is like, how do you see the relationship of uh, something like a data activator with uh, the real-time analytics that we have, mm, like mm -hmm. Gusto and like event streams? Event streams and the like. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so we're part of the same org. So actually those, those three products Roll up to a guy called Yitzhak Kesselman. He's our, our uh, VP, uh, and he's in Arun's Azure Data Org. And th the three products together, I think we've seen that every customer who is trying to implement a, 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 a real-time or streaming solution ends up using a bit of all three of them. Um, you know, messaging is kind of the messaging in the event stream world is the, the front door for all that data into Fabric. It's like, how do we go and connect out to Kafka or to CDC feeds or mm. to you know, whatever, whatever different system it might be? How do we bring those messages and those streams into a common format? How do we then get it into Fabric with an event stream? And the destinations that you'll see in event streams today, Reflex is one of them. So I can go and push that into a Reflex uh, item to, to start triggering on it. Or I can push it into Kusto. And pushing that into a Kusto database, into an event house or into uh, Kusto DB is, is, is a great way of saying, I'm going to go store that data for some longer term analytics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, 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 the time oriented nature of Kusto as a database is a great platform for looking at these very granular over a period of time kind mm -hmm. of information. You, you, they, they ingest terabytes of data on a, on a daily basis. And being able to then go and, and query that and run, looking, looking at quite complex queries that slice that and, 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 and analyze it over a, a particular period of time. The output of that is ideal for us to start ingesting into data action. We'd love to do that at some point right, in the future. Yes. Um, but today, yeah, we're, we're not quite there. But those three products always end up looking like that's, that's the real-time solution. And we're working on ways to, to, to bring them together and make that um, 
uh, make it easier to build those solutions to, together using those three products. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to talk about which I didn't? Uh, that I don't think so. No, we talked about the Ideas Forum, which is the one that I'm most, ex most excited <laughs> about. You know, anybody who's, who's watching this, please do, do go try Data Activator. You know, it's there for everybody who uses Power BI. You know, and anybody it's who's even got available for like F2. Uh, yeah, capacity. right down. Yeah, any, yeah. any fabric capacity, you can go and sign up for a trial capacity as well and start using it. Um, any Power BI report that you've got that's changing over a time period, you know, it, 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 it's fine. If it's only refreshing once a day, it's fine. We'll go check it for you once a day. Um, there's a little set alert button. Yeah. Point at, the, point at the visual that you care about. Tell us what value you're looking for, and it will go build that and, and monitor it over time. You know, it's, 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 it's easy to set up. We have tried to build the UX to be... Uh, dead easy and you know uh, almost foolproof, <laughs> um, but we know there's we know there's gaps in it. We know that um, not every Power BI visual is supported, for example. Um, so that's kind of the feedback we want. It's like what what else should we go and add support for? Are there different capabilities within those Power BI reports or different criteria that you're looking for in that data that that we need to go and support? So give us that feedback. Try it out um, and let us know how you get on. Yeah, yeah. Your feedback would would make a difference, right? It does. It does. Because because like. This is how we built, I mean, I didn't build, you guys built Power BI, right? So same, yeah, same totally. goes here, yeah. right? Uh, so, so thank you. Thanks yeah, for your time. How, how people can connect with you? Twitter, LinkedIn? Yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Twitter. I don't check, check Twitter that often anymore. Um, okay, really, the community forums are, are a great way to get in touch. Uh, yeah, or LinkedIn. Uh, Blue Sky, I use that. Uh, yeah. That's become my kind of social media of, uh, of choice instead of Twitter. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of people now getting used to it. A lot of people moving over there. Yeah, yeah. That, that's cool. Awesome. Thank you great for stuff. your time. Really, I appreciate that. That and thank you everyone for watching us until the next interview. Bye. See ya.